In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a very popular supplement known as Mary Ruth's Liquid Multivitamin. If you've been around my channel for a while, you'll know that I did make a YouTube short about it. It's about a minute long and it was very well received. So I wanted to actually expand on the supplement and give you even more information about it. First of all, this is not a sponsored video, so my opinions are completely my own. Now, if I ever do a sponsored video, you can rest assured that I will always give you my honest opinion no matter what. But before we start, hi, my name is Katie. I'm a registered dietitian and certified personal trainer. My goal here is to help you better understand supplements and products and learn more about nutrition, health, and wellness to help you achieve your best version of yourself, whatever that looks like to you. If you're new, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel so that you can stay a part of the community and continue to learn more. So let's dive into the video. What is Mary Ruth's Liquid Morning Multivitamin? According to their website, this product provides important nutrients to your body in an easy to take liquid form. It's also a vegan multivitamin made for the whole family, includes minerals, amino acids, and multi essential vitamins for your body. Okay, so in a nutshell, this is a multivitamin in a liquid form. The reason why it's unique and a little bit different than most multivitamins is that most multivitamins come in a pill or a supplement form. This version actually comes in liquid form, meaning that you can measure out a specific dose based on your age or your needs. And the company provides different dose ranges on the product, depending on whether or not you're giving this to a child or for an adult. With normal multivitamins that are in supplement or pill form, you basically can only take the whole thing, meaning that you don't have as much control over the dosage of nutrients. Okay, so now what is in Mary Ruth's Liquid Morning Multivitamin? If we look at the nutrient label, we see that it has a lot of ingredients. And you'll also see on the label that it has different doses depending on the age group. So because it's a lot of different ingredients, I'm going to break them up into vitamins, minerals, and then the extra ingredients at the bottom. So first let's start off with vitamins. As you can see on the label, it contains vitamin A as beta carotene. Now beta carotene is a form of vitamin A that is absorbed very well into the body and doesn't have as high of a risk of vitamin A toxicity. Oftentimes it's regarded as being more of a safe option, especially in supplement form. Vitamin A is something that we have to be very careful about, especially if you are pregnant. So by taking a form that is not as likely to give toxicity, this is a good thing, but you still need to be mindful of the dose. Now we do want vitamin A and it is very important for our bodies for many different reasons, but in particular, it's really important for our eyes as well as our skin. I wanna be clear though that I am not an expert in child and infant nutrition, so my focus for this video is mostly going to focus on the age category that is 14 plus, because that is more of my expertise and what I'm knowledgeable about. Now, if we look at the category for 14 plus under vitamin A, we see that it has 112% of the RDA, which isn't terrible. I still think though you should be mindful to measure this properly so you don't increase your risk of any adverse effects. Next is vitamin C. For people ages 14 plus, it contains a around 100% the daily value. But for those that are children, it's about 50%. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin, meaning that we don't really store it well in the body. And so any extra is going to be peed out in our urine. So because of this, I don't love when companies add way too much vitamin C because I don't feel like it's going to be used in the body. So it's kind of a waste. So I like the fact that this company doesn't go overboard with vitamin C. The next vitamin we have is vitamin D. Now vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin and something that a lot of us need to be really mindful of because a lot of people are deficient or mildly deficient in vitamin D, especially for us Canadians or people who live in the North or people who don't get regular sun exposure. It's very important to make sure that you're getting vitamin D, especially through supplement because getting through food is actually kind of challenging. So if we look on the label, it has about 100% the daily value for vitamin D. So this is good. I do think a lot of people need more than this. And because it's a fat soluble vitamin, it will get stored in our body. Before a multivitamin, I think that this is fine. You could consider consider still taking another vitamin D supplement on top of this, but this is something that I would talk with your healthcare provider about. The next vitamin is vitamin E, and this product has around 110% the daily value. Vitamin E is another fat soluble vitamin, so we wanna make sure that we're not having too much of it so that it's getting stored in the body in excess and it can run the risk of toxicity. But at 110% the daily value, this is pretty low, and I don't think it's going to be much of a concern in terms of toxicity, so I think this is an adequate dose. Finally, we have B vitamins, they have a lot 
lot of B vitamins in this product, and it's probably the one set of vitamins that I do think they're going a little overboard with. Remember that B vitamins are water soluble. So just like we talked about with vitamin C, if we have too many B vitamins in the body, it's just going to be excreted through our urine and we don't store it up to use at a later time. We can see that the values are around 200 to 500% the daily value, depending on which B vitamin we're talking about. I would say this is a little high. I don't think it's outstanding or super concerning, but still a little excessive. One in particular I think they are going overboard with is biotin. They have over a thousand percent the daily value of biotin. Biotin in excess doesn't benefit us in any way unless you are deficient and majority of the population is not. So if you're taking this to help grow your hair or improve your nails, it's probably not going to actually do anything for you. Now for most people taking this extra biotin is not likely going to be a problem for you. However, it can interact with certain laboratory tests. So if you're having any tests done, it's a good thing to just tell your doctor that you're taking a supplement with a high biotin dose. In terms of minerals, there is zinc in the product as well. It isn't in a very high amount though. It might help a little bit, but not a ton. The product also has chromium picolinate, which is the most bioavailable form of chromium. What bioavailable means is that it is best absorbed in our body at a higher rate than compared to other forms. And chromium is important for a lot of different functions in the body, but particularly it plays a key role in our heart health, it plays a key role in managing our blood pressure, also managing our blood sugar levels, and it plays a role in our metabolism. Overall, I don't think that the vitamins and minerals are largely concerning. I think they are in usually okay doses with the exception of some B vitamins. So I think it's pretty comparable to a lot of other multivitamins. So now that we have vitamins and minerals out of the way, I do want to talk about some of the extra ingredients that the company has added to their product. So the first ingredient we're going to talk about is inositol. Now this ingredient is actually a type of sugar, and it's sometimes called vitamin B8 despite not being a vitamin. It's actually growing in popularity too all over social media because it may play a role in PCOS management and aid with other aspects of health. First things first, you can actually get inositol in food, but you can also get it in supplement form. We do need way more high quality research and I want to make that clear right away, but there is some convincing research to suggest it may play a role in different aspects of health. In particular, it's thought to help with blood sugar management, blood pressure, mood, as well as depression. And there's a lot of upcoming research, particularly using inositol to help with PCOS. For example, it has been shown to help with blood sugar management, helping with hormonal levels, and it may help with maintaining a healthy body weight. We actually have a very recent meta-analysis on inositol in terms of managing PCOS symptoms. And for those of you that don't know, a meta-analysis is simply a study that looks at all of the available studies out there that meet a certain criteria, and they take the data and they run it through various statistical analyses to determine if the actual supplement or food or whatever the intervention is works or not. So meta-analyses are considered high quality research. Now in this study, inositol was found to be just as effective as metformin, which is a medication that a lot of people with PCOS as well as diabetes take to help manage blood sugar levels. Of course, when you look at research studies, it's important to use a critical lens and understand that there are going to be limitations with this study. And of course there are with this one. What I will always say is higher quality research is going to be needed, but it is promising. But one thing to keep in mind with this study is that they use much higher doses compared to what's available in this liquid multivitamin. For example, some studies used around 2,000 to 5,000 milligrams per day. In this product, there's only 50 milligrams. So you can kind of wonder whether or not this particular multivitamin has a high enough dose of inositol to provide any benefit. So the next nutrient I want to look at is MSM. So MSM is also known as methylsulfonyl methane. There is some research on MSM in terms of having certain benefits in the body. In particular, it's been found to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, and it's thought to help support the immune system. That being said, there isn't a lot of high quality data on MSM, so we need to be careful with making recommendations at this point. Fortunately though, MSM is considered to be safe as long as it's taken in appropriate doses. But before you go out and buy an MSM supplement or use this liquid multivitamin to get it, you can actually get MSM through food. For example, you can get it from coffee, tea, various vegetables and fruit, cow's milk, milk, and grains. One notable thing again is that this product doesn't have a very high dose of MSM. In fact, this product only has 30 milligrams for those 14 years or older. Put this into perspective, a lot of studies use doses of 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams. So because of this, I'm not sure that this particular multivitamin is going to give you much benefit in terms of using MSM. The next ingredient we'll look at is BCAAs. So BCAAs are known as branched chain amino acids and you may or may not be familiar with them. Branched chain amino acids are simply three specific types of amino acids 
acids, and amino acids are simply the building blocks of protein. These amino acids include isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Now, there's a lot of debate in terms of the benefits of taking BCAAs versus taking protein in total. I would recommend a higher protein diet in total rather than specifically focusing on BCAAs, but there is some research to support taking BCAAs in terms of performance recovery. However, the dose in this product is super low. So honestly, I don't think adding this to the product is going to provide much benefit. Moving on, we'll talk about betaine. Now, betaine is known as trimethylglycine, and this ingredient has been found to help reduce homocysteine levels. And we don't want too high of homocysteine levels because that can lead to different issues, particularly related to our heart health. In fact, having too high of homocysteine levels can damage the arteries, and this increases our risk of heart disease and stroke. In addition to lowering our homocysteine levels, which is a good thing, it may also have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. But yet again, this product has a very low dose. Most studies on betaine use doses of 2,500 milligrams or higher. So again, I really doubt that 10 milligrams of betaine in this multivitamin are going to do much for you. And then finally, let's look at hesperidin. Hesperidin is a type of flavonoid, also known as a phytochemical. And like a lot of different phytochemicals, it's going to have different properties, such as antioxidant properties and anti-inflammatory properties. A diet high in hesperidin has also been shown to help reduce the risk of chronic diseases, in particular heart disease. In particular, it might help to lower our blood pressure levels by increasing a compound known as a nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is very important for supporting healthy blood pressure. Now nitric oxide is really important because it helps to support healthy blood vessels which ultimately can make sure that our blood pressure is staying healthy and normal. Now before you go out and buy a hesperidin supplement you can actually get it through food. In particular a lot of citrus fruits have hesperidin such as oranges, lemons, clementines, mandarins, and grapefruits. Yet again this product has a very low dose of hesperidin of only five milligrams. While most studies that look at this use doses of upwards of 500 milligrams. In fact, if you were to just drink a cup of juice, you're going to get more hesperidin than you would taking this supplement. For example, in a 2007 study, they found that one cup of orange juice has 71 milligrams of hesperidin, which is well over 10 times the amount in this multivitamin. So like the theme of this video seems to be, the dose of these extra nutrients is very low. Finally, let's look at the other ingredients added to the product as you might be wondering what they're for. Honestly, if we look at these ingredients, I don't don't think that they are abnormal. They're pretty standard for any type of multivitamin. The first ingredient is water, and this makes sense because it is a liquid product. The next ingredient is vegetable glycerin. Now, vegetable glycerin is usually added in these products to prevent crystallization. It also may help to retain moisture in the product. Then we have natural flavors. I find this very vague, but it's not atypical for a product like this. It's usually just added to make the product taste better, which can be helpful if you're trying to get a child to take this multivitamin. And the rest of the ingredients that are added to this list are likely just added to provide the nutrients that are in the product. All right, so now that we've talked about the ingredients in the product, let's talk about the cost. If you go to their website, you'll notice that the product is $44.95 US dollars for a 30 day supply. That is if you are 14 years or older. Obviously, because children are going to require smaller doses, you can extend the product a lot longer. So it might last you 30 days, 40 days, 60 days, depending on how much you're using. But if you're taking it as an adult, it's meant to be a 30 day supply. As you can see, obviously you can save money if you have a monthly subscription so a lot of companies do that, so that's pretty standard. I wouldn't say that this price is outrageous for a multivitamin, particularly because it is in a unique form, but you can get high quality multivitamins at a lower cost than this if it is a concern for you. To wrap up this video, I wanted to also add in some potential benefits and downsides. So let's look at some other potential benefits. I think that the product is really great for those that have a really hard time taking pills. A lot of children do not like taking pills, so this can be a very convenient way for children to get in a little extra nutrition if it's recommended for them. If you're an adult and you really can't handle taking pills, or let's say you have conditions such as dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, or dry mouth, or for whatever reason you do struggle with taking pills, this liquid form can be a good option. The other benefit I wanted to talk about is that it is third-party tested, which I absolutely love. Third-party testing, like I have said many, many times in my other videos, helps to ensure the quality and consistency of the product and to make sure that the product doesn't contain any extra ingredients that aren't intended to be in it. For example, any heavy metals, allergens, or other contaminants that you wouldn't want in the product. So whenever you can, I do recommend getting products that are third-party tested. All right, so now let's talk about some potential downsides. I don't really think that there are a lot of downsides to this product, except for the fact that some of the nutrients I talked about are in pretty low doses. But as a multivitamin, I don't think it's actually that bad of a product. I think it is a suitable option for a lot of people. The one downside, and it's more of a warning, is that because it is in liquid form, it is very easy to not measure the appropriate dose. So what I would recommend for something like this is either to make sure you are measuring it properly in a measuring cup 
or ideally actually getting a syringe and then you can syringe it out and make sure you're measuring the right dose. Particularly if you're giving this to children, it's something to be very mindful of. Also just something to be precautious of is that some children may mistake this as being a juice or something that is very yummy and therefore they might wanna go have it without you looking. So I would make sure that it is far out of reach for children. Okay, so let me share my final thoughts of the product. Overall, I think it is a pretty straightforward multivitamin. I don't think it's overly complicated and I do think it can be helpful for people who are looking to get a little bit of extra nutrition in their diet, particularly if they're only just trying to really cover their bases and they're not using it for a very specific purpose. For example, if you were trying to use it to increase your vitamin D levels significantly, I probably would recommend a vitamin D supplement on its own rather than a multivitamin. But again, multivitamins are really meant to just cover your bases. That being said, I don't think it's overly special. I think it's a standard multivitamin. I don't think that it's something that you need to run to their website to get if it's not something that you're overly interested in. And again, in terms of those extra nutrients such as MSM, betaine, and inositol, I don't think they're in high enough doses that they're going to provide much benefit. Really, I think the biggest benefit to this product is that it's helpful for people who struggle to take pills or don't like doing so. I also, again, love that it is a third-party tested multivitamin, so that wins a lot of bonus points for me. Whether or not you decide to take it is dependent on your own personal needs, your budget, and based on the recommendations of your healthcare provider. And ultimately, it's up to you. I would say that it's not terrible and it's something that is definitely an option for a lot of people. And with that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you want me to review any other products, let me know in the comments below. And I also would love to hear your thoughts on this product if you've taken it or any other multivitamins that you've enjoyed. And if you did love this video, I would love for you to like and subscribe. It really does help support my channel and reach more people like you, and it will help you continue to learn. And I'll see you in the next video.